Election night 2024 ushered in big changes for our nation with the election of Donald Trump as the next president and for Hawaii with the defeat of the incumbent mayor on the Big Island. But the big story of the night in the islands was yesterday's surge of in-person voting, pushing most of Hawaii's voter service centers and voters' patients past their limits. Gina Mangieri reports. Hawaii switched to a vote-by-mail state in 2020, making this the third election cycle where every registered voter gets a ballot in the mail. But those who want to vote in person have only one or two voter service centers per island to go to. From the neighbor island voter service centers to Honolulu Hale and Kapolei, thousands of people queued up on election day, and some, especially in West Oahu, waited four, five, even six to vote. That's the, that's the only time I had time. The only day I had time. It sucks, but we want to vote. We want our vote to count. Tuesday's voters joined tens of thousands of others across the Hawaiian Islands who opted to vote in person. More than 22,000 on Oahu, even nearly 3,500 on Kauai, a total of nearly 40,000 in all. And of those, more than 15,000 on Tuesday alone. I've been standing up all day, so it was a couple more hours being able to do your civic duty. It's a little frustrating, but you know what, now that we're at the end, I'm excited. The last in-person ballot was not cast until just after midnight. A lot of people walked out of line because it was way too long. Five, six hour waits, that is ridiculous. It, it is unacceptable. I asked election officials what are they going to do to make this easier for election day in-person voters next time. We're going to do an, our, our uh, after action review and, and take a look at all of our options, what's available. We could still have, even if we ran five, we could still have one that had to go until midnight and we'd be in the same place, right? Is it a matter of more education, uh, you know, so that people understand that this was not COVID related because unfortunately those seem to coincide. Voter education, letting people know that um, they, could, they, they should update their voter registration. If they're going to register to vote, they should do it beforehand because a lot of what we saw with the um, taking up time. Voters who prefer in-person bristle at the suggestion that it's the public that needs to learn to vote differently. Allow me to educate you as an African-American male whose, whose ancestors have fought died, been tortured, bombed for the right for me to vote in person. So I don't have to adjust to mail-in voting. I deserve to have as many options to vote as possible, and so do all my Kama'aina residents here in the state. Lawmakers and voter rights advocates say they'll be pushing for change. Diamond Garcia will reintroduce a bill that did not advance last year to man polling places. Keep pushing and hold leadership accountable to make sure that they understand we the people are, are not going to stand by and let this happen again. Always investigating reviewed the most recent annual $150,000 a year projected when the law was drafted. In fact, elections have cost $1.5 to $2 million more. And here's the rub. If there are more voter service centers, the costs will mount even more. Do we, you know, try to open more polling places? Part of the problem with that is the expense. It's significant, but it's also very difficult to staff. That seems sort of contradictory to what the goal the legislature had in, in going to the vote by mail. Another hope before the switch was to boost participation, but overall turnout is stagnant. In the 50 to 60 percentile in presidential elections the old way, a same range the new way. Meanwhile, the number of folks devoted to election day in-person voting is surging, and critics say it would be even more if it weren't made so inconvenient. How many more might have? I mean, this is a situation that our officials were warned about specifically. It's not just an Oahu issue. Hawaii Island and Maui saw a same-day groundswell, too, after weeks of trickle-in voting on-site when service centers opened on October 22nd. Come the 5th, you know, Wailuku had a long line, and so we ended up closing somewhere around 10 o'clock last night. Couldn't you spike up resources with extra voter service centers on every island? You, One day. Like I said, you could do that, but unless you find a way to balance that, um, balance the load. If one voter service center is more popular, you're still going to have a line which will still hold up the results. Gina Mangieri, KHON2 News, always investigating.